Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. If you're loving what you're hearing on the show, go out and tell two friends today. Show them how easy it is to subscribe to the show. Whether you're on the Apple platform, Android, or on an old-fashioned PC, subscribing to a podcast is easier than ever. We're on 20 different platforms. On today's show, we're talking about one of the hidden costs, and therefore, one of the hidden values of a parcel of land. This has to do with access to fresh drinking water. Water is emerging as the master resource that will determine the very survival of the human species. We tend to think of our water in terms of drinking water for human consumption and for washing and bathing. That for sure is a very real need. What we don't see is the water consumed to produce the food we eat. Some forms of food production consume incredible amounts of water. For example, in the state of California, 15% of the state's water consumption goes towards the cultivation of one crop, and that's almonds. That's a huge number. We're seeing an erosion of the water table in many parts of the country. When Las Vegas was founded about a century ago, it was a valley in a desert. The people at the time drilled relatively shallow wells that seemed to flow without limits. The early users of that groundwater didn't pay any attention to conservation, and then they fairly quickly ran dry. Today, Almost all the wells are dry, and the city of Las Vegas gets its water from the Colorado River. The water level in Lake Mead has fallen steadily over the years, and today, the final stages of the Colorado River that flow into Mexico no longer reach the ocean. The riverbed is bone dry. There have been multiple diversions of the mighty Colorado to service agricultural and municipal water needs of the communities along its path. The Central Arizona Project diverted the river into the city of Phoenix to provide fresh water from a metro of over 4.3 million people. India, with over a billion people, is running out of water. Saudi Arabia is out of water. They've used their oil wealth to build the most elaborate desalination system in the world. There's no question that the cost and efficiency of desalination have come down dramatically over the past 50 years. The older evaporation-based systems were the most power-hungry of all. Today's modern, multi-stage reverse osmosis systems use one-tenth of the energy of those original systems. But depending on the salinity of the water, you're looking at somewhere between 75 cents per cubic meter of water up to about $1.30. That's about 250 gallons. Now, that assumes, of course, you're talking about a large-capacity municipal-grade system. When you look at the breakdown of these costs, about 45% of the cost of producing the water goes towards direct energy costs. The remainder is tied up in the life cycle cost of the equipment, and the operation of the plants. The United States is the second in the world in terms of installed desalination capacity. Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, much of the Middle East, and Italy are increasingly turning to desalination to cope with their water shortages. Part of the issue is finding adequate supply. The other side of the equation, of course, is consumption. We have a culture that treats water like it's free, like it's a human right. Let's look at how much water it takes to produce food. It takes about 15 gallons to produce a pound of lettuce and about 22 gallons to produce a pound of tomatoes. At the other end of the spectrum, it takes about 3,000 gallons to produce a pound of beef. So when you have that 8-ounce filet mignon, you should be mindful of the fact that you've just consumed about 1,500 gallons of water. If you have steak seven days a week, and I know a few people who do, you've just consumed 10,500 gallons in a week just for your steak. That's half a million gallons of water a year. Now, I'm not telling you this to advocate a vegetarian or vegan diet. That's entirely up to you. This is just the hidden resource consumption that goes into our personal consumption of the one master resource in the world. So when you purchase a parcel of land, you want to pay close attention to the water rights and responsibilities that come with that parcel of land. In North America, water rights generally date back to British common law and are based on the concept of riparian water rights. Generally speaking, you own the groundwater underneath your property. You have no ownership, however, of the water that flows across your land, and you have significant responsibility to protect and maintain the water that flows across your land. As you think about that, and you're looking at land purchases, pay very close attention to the one master resource, that is water. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.